Hey Robert, okay. Hi there, Martine. Nice to see you. I just uh, signing on. Hey Marlene, nice to see you. Chloe. Oh, Annie. Hey, look, I can actually, you know, it's such a trade-off. Um, YouTube tells me to do this in vertical, but, uh, which, hey Michelle, but, um, you know, the downside, hey Patty, hey, ciao. Um, it's, uh, you know, you get the broader perspectives if I go into landscape, but it just seems to say this is better. So good morning, everyone. So I am in Canmore, Alberta. And, uh, and well, I'm on the edge of town. And I have done a walk here quite a long time ago, but it's just so beautiful this morning. Um, and yesterday was just so gorgeous that I really wanted to come and share this area with everyone. Um, and and I, uh, well, I'm just here for a few reasons. Um, I'm meeting an old friend who I don't see very often at all. Um, uh, and we're going to have coffee and then, uh, and then I've got a meeting at the bank. So, and of course I'm going away in just a couple of days, but, uh, but it's nice to have you here. So, and because my friend Robert's here and we always say, okay, it's just nice to acknowledge that we're on Treaty 7 territory. Um, Patty, it has been too long. It has been far too long. Uh, and Patty, I thought of you a lot because I was just in Italy, as you know, and so that was really fun. And I was, uh, and that, that wasn't work. I mean, I was at work in Albania, but I was visiting friends in Rome. So, um, so yeah, it was lovely over there, but sure nice to be home. It is four degrees Celsius out here right now. We're extremely dry. Uh, our snowpack, and you're going to see a lot of snow on this. Our snowpack is at, hi Paula, our snowpack is at about 48% of what would be considered normal. So tonight, there is a heavy snowfall warning. Solange, hola, hola, bienvenidos. Um, we do have blue sky, but not as blue as it was yesterday. Yesterday was perfect. Um, and <laughs> I just, you know, I, just, I had to put that joke up while a friend sent that to me last night. That was, that was funny as can be. But, um, but yeah, our snowback is about 48%. So we're all terrified about fires. However, starting tonight, there's a heavy snowfall warning for a pretty vast area, but we could get five to 10 centimeters overnight and another five to 10 tomorrow. Wednesday's gonna clear right up and be sunny again. So I might sneak out to the ski hill. I should have been skiing a lot more for the last 10 days when I've been home, but the conditions are so poor. I took my road bike out yesterday, like the one with the thin tires. I only did about five kilometers, but I took it out, pumped the tires up, and then, hey, Nat, salut. Um, but then I, uh, then I took my big fat bike out because it was just beautiful conditions. But let's just start with some of our morning views here. So I am in an area known as Larch Island. So you'll see snow down below me here. And this is all the natural river braiding. So there's Hatling Peak. Hi, Barbara. Nice to see you. Um, oh, it's so nice to share time. There's the Miners Range up there. And again, many of you who have toured with me a lot know this area. Hi, Jane. But, uh, but the light is just so different this time of year. So there is Eeyore. That is the east end of Arundel. And of course, so often we share Mount Arundel, but this is the exact other side of it. And from this perspective, I just thought it'd be such a nice way. Now these, well, some of the buds, none are out around here because the ground is still frozen. Isn't it a great view from here? It sure is, Chloe. Um, but at home in Banff and some of the warmer areas, the trees, like buds have actually shown up. I very intentionally took my earphones out because the birds are making so much noise and the robins are back. That's our indicator of spring. But I want to come this far here and then I'll head to kind of the main path. You're going to see some of the nice houses of Camar too. But you see, this is the provincial park boundary. By the way, you see dogs must be on leash. Um, no camping. Uh, no biking here either. Um, but uh, interesting mix. And no drones. That's a really strict thing. But as I just come around here in the distance, you're looking up to the Fairholme Range up there in the distance. And we're actually just down below Mount Peak Chi, which is Soaring Eagle, which is gorgeous. And also this fun ecosystem down through here. Look at this old, very old aspen tree here. But what's happened is birds have been nesting right in there. You see that? So that would have started out with the pileated woodpeckers probably digging a hole in it, then it's been widened out and sparrows would nest. But look at the new growth that's actually come out of this tree. Hey, John, isn't that, I am in Camor. Isn't that just fantastic? Now I was actually gonna go walk on the golf course this morning. Um, but it just looked a little bare to me. I thought I'd come down to this path, uh, but I wanted to come up. But this is where you can see all the woodpeckers have worked their way into these trees. Um, but down here in Larch Island, so Larch Island is 
a unique little ecosystem unto itself. And this is all part of the broader Kananaskis country. So Chief Kananaskis, who was a stony chief um, and apparently an extremely broad and strong and brave person. Uh, but this area is really five provincial parks cobbled together over 4,000 square kilometers and just hugging up against... Um, hey, Allison, hey there. Um, hugging up against Banff National Park. Uh, so, so that, so my friend Allison there, who is from Banff in Scotland, and as I see Allison on your things, you are busy working doing, doing tours on Loch Ness. Um, whereas we don't have any, <laughs> we don't have any boat trips yet this time of year. Uh, but we are actually melting away. So last year, the ice was off of Lake Louise by mid-May. Normally, of course, it's that first week of June. So that's a, you know, a pretty important difference. And we are worried. We're worried about forest fires this year. Um, we had them last year. But when I say we're worried, like people have escape bags in their houses just in case a fire came through. So what we'd love to have is when you were here, Robert, we'd love to have a rainy June to just soak everything and make it all safe. But this is, again, we're in a braided river valley. We're very much in the Bow Valley, of course. And so this whole area fills up very distinctly with water when the melt comes on. But we're going to have some gorgeous views. Um, you're up. Well, I'm going to be in Scotland, of course, in June. Not going to get all the way up to where Ali is. So Ali took my group on a tour last year up in Inverness. But uh, pretty neat. But here we are, a sensitive area. So this is the area known as Larch Island right here. And this is, underneath us, um, is one big, deep aquifer of water in all directions. And so on the other hand, believe it or not, even though we're so dry at the moment, Canmore does experience flooding. Um, we had the, well, the record, the world the famous flood in 2013, which then flooded the city of Calgary. But what happened there is this valley, we sort of refer to it, as a saddle. So when we get into the, um, the the bigger, wider views of the valley, I'm just looking around to see if I can show you some beaver activity down around here. But, um, but what happened is a storm cell came and sat in this valley and we had more rain overnight than you'd have in like two months. Again, a dry part of the world. But that still wasn't a lot of rain compared to say, parts of, well, rainy places in the world. Um, yet the snow hadn't melted yet. So that all came down and created a great big wave. But that's a, uh, a bit of a different effect, of course. So it is something that is on everyone's minds here. But uh, let's head down onto the path. So this path, personally, carries a lot of memory for me. Um, that's morning. But this particular path, when uh, so you can see where we are kind of in the world. And this is, gives you a sense. So there's the Larch Island area, which isn't truly an island, but uh, this is where the rivers get braided. And so you have these arms of them that fill up. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, drain out, depending on the time of year. But it's actually a big aquifer onto itself. Isn't it gorgeous? But uh, when my little boy was, oh, three, three and a half, there used to be a daycare down around here. And uh, I didn't, I took two years off as like stay home dad, but it was fun for him to go and socialize because we'd been living in France. And so I was training for a big climb in South America. So I would strap him on my back and from my house to his daycare, was four kilometers. I'd walk down here, drop him off for a couple hours, go home, come back, pick him up and walk home. And you, I think that's part of the reason we're so close because we would just chat about all the nature as we'd wander along down this path here. Oh, I don't know. I just want to give you a chance to see if you can hear the birds out there. As I tell you, Robert, that, uh, oh, are you hearing them? Yeah, that shadowy creature who follows me. Shadowy creature was really following me yesterday. Um, and I did see my first gopher of the year, and I made a silly little post on, uh, on YouTube <laughs> about that. But those are the three sisters, of course, up in the distance there. And uh, they're all climbable. And of course, <clears throat> you know, it was interesting. My son Finn did an excellent tour the other day up by the hoodoos but talking about the formation imagine this whole valley and it's a massive valley but imagine this all filled with ice about 14,000 years ago now ice has come and gone like up at the columbia ice fields for example there's been ice there for about a million and a half years but these mountains pop up out of the ground if you split the difference 
about 85 million years ago. So it's actually a very old formation, but the rock is more like 470, 480 million years old up there. And so, uh, and then they've been carved into these shapes. So that huge valley up there, which goes up into the Spray Valley, uh, is a big glacial valley that would have poured down into these glaciers. So when I'm down in Southern Alberta, uh, out in the, the prairies down towards Lethbridge and of course famous head smashed in Buffalo Jump and all those areas down there, you'll see these huge boulders. In fact, one of the most famous beers that's brewed in the Calgary area is called Big Rock and is named after a great big rock out by Okotoks. And those are erratics that were brought down out of these mountains and dropped way down south when the ice melted. So that's the formation, but it's happened many times. They've carved them into what we see now. This is something we see around town quite often here, which is Defend Alberta Parks. And that is because the current government in this province um, uh, is putting on user fees and uh, wanted to actually allow even conceivably some mining in some of the parks. Like that is totally unacceptable. So we're not huge fans. The one bit of good news about uh, the current state of politics in Alberta is if there were an election tomorrow, Daniel Smith would not be our premier. But anyway, um, hopefully that carries on through. I was telling a friend too, uh, I used to have a, we used to have a trampoline like that in the backyard. I tell you what, you want to fill time with an energetic four-year-old, five-year-old, all the way up to, to about 15-year-old. That's a great thing to do. And we managed to get through it with no injuries. Um, yeah, Jane, I mean, oh, okay. Now, if you have good eyes, the very top of the highest tree in front of us, there's a robin on the top of that. So that is the North American robin. So if you're from the UK or from Europe, it will look much more like, a, I guess, a starling or something. But those are the robins. They're just back now. Yeah, the big red-breasted North American robin. Look at that blue sky up behind. So that's the Alberta blue, the ethereal blue we get here. <laughs> that, that bird is yelling out there saying, who else is here? Want to make a baby with me? Um, and I have been seeing a lot of northern flickers. That's the second largest of the woodpeckers we get in the area. The largest, of course, is the pileated. The pileated stay all winter. They're just such beautiful, beautiful birds. But you see how there's actually no water flowing in here right now. Um, um, there is, I do have borrowed, by the way, a buy me a coffee. I finally <laughs> signed on to it, oddly enough. And, and there is, and I do get it, and I'm all for it. So thank you very much. Um, it's just on the website. You can click through on the buy me the coffee. Um, and it's, the, my only thing that I ever feel badly about that is I don't necessarily see who's done it. And it's just, you know, nice to, to acknowledge that. But, uh, but yeah, it does. Um, but I think the buy me a coffee isn't just PayPal. So anyway, that's, but here on, um, on YouTube, there's this process of doing these super thanks. And honestly, I don't really know how it works, but, but people do it. So I just leave you with that. But, uh, now the couple of the downsides as we're wandering down the street here and looking at, um, you know, obviously you have these lovely homes over here and they really are beautiful homes. But, and I've given you the story before, but it's worth sharing. So Canmore was a mining town. And that's because as you look up at this rock, particularly up at the side we're looking at over here, but from the Three Sisters right along to this grassy range there, there's Miner's Peak is the one just to the left of Howling Peak. So the older rock sits atop the, the lighter rock. Like a couple of uh, chipmunks, just the chipmunks are up and out now looking very small. I don't know if you'll see them just in the rocks. There's several of them now. Chipmunks have the straight tail and the stripes on the head. Um, but uh, of course this land, people have been living here for 14,000 years in the Stony Nakoda principally for the last couple of thousand. Um, but when the trains arrived here, down below the rock you see up there is anthracite coal. Huge, huge standings of anthracite coal. Um, yeah, there's just a chipmunk. I don't know if you can see him or her. Oh, just running away now. Funny how that happens. But the anthracite coal is the hottest burning of the coals. And so that's what created the mining through here. And I'm going to go up to the old train bridge. That was the economy of this town. Um, and <clears throat> all these power wires we see are important. I don't know. Well, they're mostly the robins making that racket. Uh, but I am hearing a few other sounds. So it's a great question. 
Um, oh, it was Alvin. It was Alvin. Uh, so they've got power and we've got some dams up there that go back to the mining days. But they're actually good now, so it's green community. But it was mining here from 1883 to 1979, which still, coal mining, is so dangerous, managed to kill over 100 people. Um, but it was a, you know, it was a, a working class town in its own way. And then started to really kind of decline until Calgary was awarded the Olympics in 1988. Well, they couldn't do any of the Olympic events in Banff, even though Banff had previously bid for the, um, for the 1960 Olympics, didn't get them. So they decided to put in, um, okay, uh, they decided to put them put the cross country and the biathlon and everything here in Canmore. Well, the world suddenly realized that you could buy land in the Canadian Rockies in this one little pocket because Kananaskis country had already been protected by Peter Law. He had a wonderful government we had back in the 70s. Um, and so people started to come in because you can't buy in Banff, right? Need to reside clause. And so people started building homes here. Well, now the last statistic I heard is that Canmore is the ninth most expensive community in the world. Uh, and somewhere around, the numbers fluctuate, 25% of houses sit empty. And that is a real concern because desperate shortage of housing. So that's one of the challenges. But of course, so you get some of the older, lovely little homes like this one up in here. Um, but it's just a bit of a, you know, a bit of a difficult housing environment and a real challenge. Look at this ice that's built up here. Now, it's all gnarly looking because the whole branch of the river here has drained out totally. Um, and as it's all drained out, then really you're just left with the ice. But this will start to fill up. Well, we'll see what happens over the next three weeks. It's meant to be minus eight or minus nine tonight and tomorrow night. So that'll keep the freeze going on and hopefully keeps the ice up on Lake Louise. For quite a lot longer but we are going to start to come up and see the gorgeous bow river up in the distance now and this time of year sometimes i'm going to peek over sometimes we can see some of the uh the dolly varden or the bull trout um spawning this time of year so i'm going to be up in jasper there in may depends what it's going to be like up at Moline lake but up at Moline lake um you can go and look over their bridge and you'll see, well, the largest fish ever caught up there was 21 pounds, like 10 kilos. So that's big, like these ones don't get too big, but the views just become more and more dramatic. So there's the old train bridge and that bridge goes back to the mine that would have connected to the main line. So I'm gonna wander over there, but let's just come in through the forest here. But isn't it nice to have a morning walk? It is just so beautiful. Um, and it's, oh, you know what? Whoever's making the comments, you don't need to be there. Uh, this is not a state river. This is the province of Alberta in the Canadian Rockies, the town of Canmore. And we're looking up into Kananaskis country. And oh, I can hear a helicopter going over. Oh, in fact, let me see. Don't know if it'll come up on the screen. It's just gone over the, the face of Howling. So a helicopter moving right across the front. Generally, that's just sightseeing. However, I don't think it's going to happen. Sometimes they'll close the road and they will bomb for avalanches up there. I don't think there's enough snow back. I expect they're just heading in. But just to put it in perspective for those who understand, is we're in Kananaskis country and then you move into Banff National Park just about a third of the way down, not even a quarter of the way down that huge mountain up there. Do you know that helicopter, they never fly right across. Hey, thanks, Sarah. I appreciate that. Um, they never come right across the front there, so they might just be looking for snowpack up there. But that is just, just beautiful to see. I've been up in the helicopters quite a few times. Um, it's interesting when you do cross over, um, <laughs> that's a good plan, Marilyn. But when you cross over that pass to go into the spray alley, you always feel a bump because you get a big pressure change up the side of the mountains. So that's, uh, that's just the, the formation of it. And of course, it's all that limestone up there. What is so wonderful is that, um, is that when you climb up the back of Howling, and I have done virtual tours up the back, I've climbed that peak there, uh, the one right in front of us, which of course, formerly known as Chinaman's Peak, but I've climbed that peak oh, in my life, 
I mean, well over a hundred times. You drive up to the back and you zigzag, but it's why it's such a wonderful climb is that you can very quickly have that experience of being up above the tree line without having to be out in, you know, much more extreme conditions. And uh, when I was training for climbs, I'd put on, you know, 30 kilos, 60 pounds on my back and climb up there and sit up top. And you're only up at 2,400 meters at the top of that. That's about 8,000 feet. So you don't really suffer from elevation unless you live right at sea level. Now look how low the river is now, but it's starting to pick up some volume. We've had a couple of genuinely warm days now, and we're looking back down. You will recognize way in the distance there. That is where you've got Cascade Mountain, same one that you look at from Banff Avenue, but we're looking at it down, uh, down this valley, totally different direction. Isn't that just fantastic? So let's head on over to the train bridge and we'll have a little peek into the water and see if there's any chance of seeing any fish out there. The Grassy Range is named for Lawrence Grassy. He was an immigrant from Italy, worked in the mines, but he really worked tirelessly to have that whole region protected up there, which is just wonderful. Now in better years, when there is a really good snowpack, if you are extremely experienced backcountry skiing, you can climb up the back of this and you can actually ski down the front of it. But you really have to know where you're going because there's some real cliff formations, which for all the obvious reasons, you don't want to, um, you don't want to uh, get wrong. But it is, you know, it is such a beautiful place coming down here. And, uh, and I always love this opportunity to come. And, uh, you know, it is interesting. You know, we're on, have a look at the tree that's down in the water. This is the other thing that happens. That's the freeze and thaw. That's the erosion, but there's some nice reflections. But yeah, the bridge is, <laughs> and as kids, we would jump off it, but you wait till there's really high water. And you wouldn't jump off it though when you're right in, um, right in August, even though it's the warmest time of year. And that is because it's so full of glacial silt, you can't see to the bottom. And then you don't know what's floating down in there. So it's kind of a July activity. Some more birds telling stories. So this is talking about the old coal mining days here. And there you can see on Friday, July 13th, 1979, the last mine closed. Um, but it was pretty important. And of course, the trains in this country were run off, thanks Anne, were run off coal until 1954. And then they were switched over to diesel. And, uh, but it's interesting. There is the following activities are uh, prohibited. Climbing on the bridge structure. Uh, <laughs> well, so you shouldn't be jumping off the bridge, but hey. The other interesting thing just to talk about as a side note is they're doing a lot of controls right now on the bottom, but have been doing it for a long time on, on watercraft that come up from particularly warmer areas. And that is because they carry up on the bottom these muscles. And of course, this is the changing climate, right? So just letting some people wander by here. Yeah, no kids are, including myself, Marlene. <laughs> but, you know, it is it is cold. I remember when I was in uh, Bosnia last year and they would jump into that river in Mostar and I went swimming in it in the morning, but I didn't jump in. I don't, they say it's the coldest river in Europe. Bit of a shock to the system. You know, this water in the summertime will get up to maybe four degrees Celsius. The water temperature is probably right on zero. Might be one at the moment, but let me just frame a few perfect photos. And young at heart, exactly right. But, uh, oh, it's just so perfect. So, and the river has got a lot to come up. So I'm going to be away now for a couple of weeks. Look at this. I mean, it's almost like it's framed to be an artistic shot. So those are the three sisters down there. You might remember one time back when we had, uh, had Hago and those virtual tours, I was down here and I actually was able to get a fish down on the left. I remember we were able to see one down in there. The osprey are not back yet. I would say the robins are back, the flickers are back. Oh, and, and, oh, there, fish just rose. Did you see that? Those are fish just rose in the water there. Um, and the swans are out at Lac des Arc. And maybe later today, I might try and drive around there and see, because I just haven't been able to get close enough to them. Um, I think, Marlene, your osprey stay, don't they? Um, man, they certainly do on Cape Cod, but ours go away. Of course, they're fishing birds. And there's a, a mallard down in the distance there. And 
a friend of mine who does some outstanding wildlife photography uh, recently saw Harlequin. Oh, sorry, a merganser. Um, now, I am looking down. I don't know if it'll come through on the screen at all, but I'm looking down into the clear, clear water there. I think it is coming through on the screen. But I was just trying to see if I can find any of the fish, because certain times of year, spring, but more into June, you will actually see the fish out here. And, uh, and you'll see them at spawning time. So I'll definitely go looking for them up in Jasper. I'll be in Jasper uh, twice in May, but right in late May where it might be clear as well. So there's a couple of, couple of ducks out there. Ah, oh, fabulous creatures. But yeah, that, you know, let's, let's wander down to the edge of the water, shall we? I think that's a lovely idea. If I keep going this way, I eventually get right up against the power station. And it's really neat because that churns up a ton of water and it's a great place for fishing. Um, but uh, yeah, they do absolutely clear. They, they leave really quite early. I mean, a few things say, and I saw the gopher yesterday and the gophers are hilarious because they're, they're just coming up out of the ground now chirping away and they're up from it's a little early i guess but may june july but by later august when it's getting down below freezing the gophers disappear underground and as the rivers drop then very quickly the um the osprey fly away and head south i guess um but i don't know well let me see see how this path is looking down through here at the moment but yeah, I have stood on the top of that mountain as well a few times. It's really a nice hike. It's about two hours. Again, from the other side, right? If you go up the cliff face, it's a very genuine, challenging climb. But let's go down. Oh, this is going to be easy. Down to the edge of the river and just see if we could see any life in the river there. You do know what you call a fish with no eyes, I expect. It's a fish. Sorry, that's our fish joke. Um which is very different than a deer with no eyes. I don't know what to call that. No idea, in fact. But uh, have a look. You can see even this is another branch of the river down through here. <laughs> another branch. So this will actually fill up when we get into high water. And that's where it's very important, this whole larch area island here, to leave this free. Right in here, right by this one little pine tree, this little stump in there, was chewed down by a beaver and you can see another tiny little one there and you can always see the effect of the beaver's teeth on it. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it's uh, what I, the one thing I don't like is you don't see this a lot in Western Canada but there's some graffiti around here and I always find that a real turn off. It's uh, what's the old saying don't put don't paint the lily um, but you can see that there was a bridge here way back in the early days. But yeah, I'll just come around. I'll be able to get around to the water level. But these, of course, these bridges had to be built. Um, other end. But the, uh, <coughs> the, you know, the, to support the great big coal trains, to this day, the coal trains that go west, look at this ice. This is just gorgeous here. But the coal trains that go west, you see them going through Jasper a lot because there's some big mines and then down in the crow's nest. They can, they take up to four kilometers to stop because they're so heavy. And the heaviest trains that move out in this part of the world, which might well be the heaviest trains in the world because generally the longest trains in the world out here through Western Canada. Now we are very fortunate that so much of the freight moves on train tracks as opposed to on roads. Uh, the other element, you haven't really noticed, but um, there are so many people out jogging everything. This community does have the highest per capita percentage of Olympic athletes in the world. And <clears throat> so it is very, very sporty. Oh boy, look at this clear, spectacularly clear water. Um, yeah, the reflections are just, I totally agree, Chloe. But I don't see, I did see those few fish rise. Um, but I'm not seeing large numbers of them spawning yet. But how's that for a view down in the distance? It's pretty magical. So it is just a lovely, gentle time to come for a morning walk in the mountains here. Oh, sorry, I just heard, heard fish rise again. So they sit pretty much out in the current here. They're probably bull trout, which is the dolly vard, and that's a native 
fish and it's um, heavily protected. They are quite an aggressive fish, so they were actually easy to catch. Um, there's mountain white fish and there's trout down in here as well. But all of these rocks that I'm just tiptoeing over at the moment, this is partly here. You're very welcome. Um, this is all here as well as flood mitigation. And even though we keep talking about forest fires and droughts, well, you know, flood is one of the other concerns, but we haven't had a winter like that for a while. No, I'm not seeing any of them. But the osprey will come back soon because they love these conditions. Say so later in the year, when the glaciers start melting, we get that deep turquoise, which is, of course, one of the reasons people travel to this part of the world because it's just so beautiful. But um, but then they don't see through the, the water quite as well. Very tempting to go for a swim here this morning. <laughs> but but I, I, I don't think I should show up for my meeting at the bank hall, shivering and dripping cold. I did have a cold shower this morning, though that was kind of nice. There we are. Oh, the colors are just wonderful. And I do agree, the cloud, oh, the ducks are just landing. Yep, the clouds, the sky. I, oddly enough, I, I like the sky. I guess it's never a competition, but almost best out here. Um, just because it's that, oh, fish just rose in front of me. Just because it's that little bit wider, it tends to pull the clouds in towards the mountains and that leaves you so often with this kind of very distinct blue patch up here. But yeah, the, uh, the fish are riding. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, listen, thank you for coming and hanging out. I wanted to do a nice morning trip. So just look you over the next little while. Um, Finn will be putting up some tours on his website. And uh, I am going to put up a couple of very, very special dates. Uh, because, of course, in a few weeks, I will be up in the Yukon Territory. Um, and Dawson City, which I've been promising for so long. But uh, <clears throat> we'll see what happens in the next couple of days. Um, uh, well, it's our real concern, Joanna, is fires, absolutely. But, um, sorry, I'm watching my step. Very uneven rock down here. But it's nice morning exercise. But um, if I touch the back of the screen here, it should readjust the no, readjust the sky there, no? Um, hey, peace and love to all of you, everyone. But I will be uh, flying over. So I fly Wednesday night to London. Literally spend one night. And then, um, but I believe I'm going to be going to the the World uh, Wildlife Photography Exhibit. So that's fun. And then I'm down to uh, Madrid. Now I did do some virtual tours in Madrid back on the old platform, but I'll do some YouTube Live and some Facebook Live. Uh, I'll be in Madrid and I'm running a tour and obviously that takes priority as it always does, but uh, really looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's one that, it was a custom tour that I set up um, last year. So it's nice to have it come to fruition. Um, but also some of you will be familiar with Sean who's a virtual guide as well, lives up in Galicia. Thanks, Barbara. Um, and I'm at the end of the trip, I need to go up and visit him for two days. We've known each other now for three years, but we've never met. And he's sort of acted as the agent, so I'm looking forward to that. But Madrid, Seville for sure. I'll be there in an afternoon. Um, I am going to be in Gibraltar. You might remember I did a bunch of tours in Gibraltar a few years ago. I'm not sure because it's a very packed day. Um, so it was nice to see you, Patty. Big hugs to you. Well, Barbara, I will put on probably next year. I'll probably put on a uh, uh, Portugal. I've also got Morocco. I'm going to Morocco for a day, but I've got Morocco on the mind. Um, it will be Martine, yeah. And then, yeah, back home in May and then um, over to Ireland and Northern England and Scotland in June. So a lot, but I'm going to spend my entire July and August here at home in the Rockies. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, so that's everything. But anyway, thanks for coming for a morning walk. Feel free, of course. Please do um, do me the favor of always hitting the like and sharing and blah, blah, blah. You know, we're, we're about a million users away from making this sustainable. But you know what? It's really growing. Oh, sorry, the sun's just coming out. Let me just give you one more little side view. Look at that gorgeous view right now. So, Jane, I would love to come to the Midlands. I, I literally am coming through North Wales going up to York and then heading up to Scotland. It's my group in June. So this group that I have in Spain now is 17 people. It was originally going to just be 10. And then so many people asked to come. So we expanded, but kept that as a small group. The group in June are really lovely people from Ohio. I know several of them, but it's a group of 43. So that will be a very busy time. And like everything, it's always the trade-off. The bigger the group and it makes it more cost efficient for people. And I totally understand that. So, um, but, oh, see, there was, that was just a robin just came by. Sorry, before I just 
sign off. Let me see if I can, there's a, so there's the North American Robin. There's one on the ground. I'm just gonna try and zoom in. Oh, yeah, okay, just in the, let me see if I can get it for you. There's so, uh, there you go, right in the middle of, that is the red-breasted Robin, the North American Robin. See how big that, oh, there's, telling us stories. You know, Justina, managing 43 is surprisingly easy when I have a big bus because it's the same microphone. And I'm doing more and more of these small custom tours at the moment, but I, gosh, my first tour I ever, ever did over two decades ago was 53 people. <laughs> so uh, it's, yeah, you will have to Google them. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, isn't that lovely? So. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, lots of love to everyone and peace from the beautiful Canadian Rockies. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for supporting my kids so much too. I really appreciate that. Oh, <laughs> hold on. Let me just give you the Robin one more time because you can see the breast on it. Sorry, I realize I keep trying to sign off, but there's that. There you go. So that is our just, there you go. That tells us spring is here. I'm further away because I'm zoomed, but just give you that nice, gorgeous view there. There, that gorgeous bird. You're very welcome, my friend. Take care and talk to everybody soon. Bye-bye.